All right, we've got my pair of wallabies here. These things have been popular for decades and around the early 2000s, they kind of started to dip in popularity, but they are back. And I'm gonna tell you, one thing I don't like about these is that they're unlined and my toes get real cold in the winter time. And if I try to wear these, yeah, they start to turn blue. So I'm going to winterize these things so that I can keep going during the winter. So let's go. Now, we don't work on these. I called around to a bunch of other cobbler shops and asked if they do, and they said no. A lot of people have discontinued working on these things. As we get going, I'll explain some of the reasons why. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a beast. All right, reason number one why I don't like to resole these is once you cut it all off, it's still almost like melted to the, the base of the shoe. And it is, you can see it is stitched. The first layer is stitched on, but it's also glued on. And for this, I basically just have to keep getting chunks and trying to pull it off. Sanding isn't the best idea either. So if you're wondering, why don't you just sand it? Let me show you what sanding will do. So as you can see, you can sand it off, but what happens is as you sand it, it goes from one solid piece to these tiny little bits that just remelt and then re-dry onto the stuff and you still gotta pull it off. So basically your only option is to do both. You gotta pull off as much as you can and then try to sand off the rest of it, but it just melts as soon as you start to glue it. I mean, start to sand it. All right, I've got it off the best that I can. It kind of looks like the mange uh, getting that, that, that rubber off, but it's good enough that we can start to rebuild it. Never again, this was a beast to do, but you know it's not a beast, not a hard decision, switching out a buckle on your belt with Anson belts. Guys, Anson is a holeless micro adjustable belt system. And basically what you do is every time you slide your belt in, it is built on a track system. And those little tracks are only one quarter inch apart, giving yourself a much better fit with your belt. And also Anson is a one size fits all. Basically what you do, you wrap the belt around you, you find out where it fits you best, you cut off the excess, you put on the buckle, you latch it down, bam, you're good to go. No more ugly creases and no more sloppy punched holes. Now, one of the things that I also really like about Anson belts is the interchangeability of them, which means that you can mix and match both the straps and the buckles. And they have a lot of different options. So for example, some of the straps that you can get are leather, suede, canvas. And then for the buckles, they always have a lot of different styles and colors to choose from. Now, another thing that Anson offers is a high-end Premier collection. Now, what that means is they feature genuine crocodile as well as Italian calfskin. Now, those are a little more expensive, but they're very reasonably priced for being true crocodile as well as true Italian calfskin. Both of those made in the USA. Now, guys, Anson belts also have a lifetime guarantee. They also have amazing customer service, and it is also a family-owned business just like ours. Now, I know one of the owners personally. He's a fantastic guy, and I'm telling you guys, a great company. Now, Anson is always having great deals, so if you're not signed up already, make sure you sign up for their text club as well as their email list. Now guys, for a limited offer, click on the special link down in the description box or go to ansonbelt.com forward slash Trent for an amazing discount. Now, I personally recommend getting the box of two straps and three buckles, which give you a possibility of six belt combinations. And guys, you get all of that for under $100.
All right, so there is the upper. It is literally a two-piece construction. The only stitch is in the back and it is a moccasin style where it's one piece and folded up this way. Um, it does have a little place through the, the shank area. There's no shank in these. So these are, like I said, they are just one piece and they are not the warmest things in the world. So I am going to winterize these things by lining them in sheep tool. All right, so the wall up around the toes is a little too thick. So it's actually decreasing the size of my shoe like over a full size. So we got to thin this out. What better way? Hair clippers. So I want to leave all of this to keep my, the, uh, the back portion of my foot warm, but I'm thinking about doing a high fade, maybe you know, gradually taking it down to like a one, one and a half, just along the toes. And I think that'll look pretty slick. So we've got our lining made. We're just gonna put some glue on the outside, glue on the inside, and then stick it. We left it a little bit oversized, that way we can stitch along and then trim the excess off. lining in I'm gonna stitch around the collar up here and that'll hold it into place then when I put the uh, the top piece back on it will clench it all together up through here so All right, now about the soling material. All right, so this is plantation crepe, natural crepe, natural rubber. There's different names for it. 
it has actually become very hard to find this stuff. And one more reason why a lot of cobblers are not resoling these type of shoes anymore. I actually had to go all the way to England to find a couple of sheets of this rubber, but it is very gummy. This is the real deal. It is straight from the sap of a rubber tree. And um, it, it, that's why it melts and you just have to really kind of attack this and, and, and treat it in a certain way uh, versus like other type of synthetic rubber. So we're gonna cut some soles out for this and then continue on. All right, to really make sure that this glue adheres, we're gonna treat it with this type of primer. This primer you can use on natural rubber. And there's different primers for different type of materials. You just kinda have to learn as you go. And I'm still learning. All right, we'll let this sit for probably about 15 to 30 minutes and then we'll put our glue on. These are the old insoles. It's just a leather board. We're gonna make some new ones out of vegetable tan. So you didn't see it, but all I did was stuck the base layer on. Uh, as you can remember, this was insole stitch. So we'll stitch this on, then we will glue the one piece, the rest of it on to build it up. Time to get these uppers cleaned up a little bit. You don't see me doing this very often, so uh, soak it in. You don't. You may not get this again. This is kind of an old leather, so that's the reason we're using this old conditioner. You know this conditioner kind of smells like cherry coke. All right, we've wrapped up this pair of wallabies. 
first off, I want to tell you, remember our men's sandals are coming back. Y'all have asked for this time and time again. When are you bringing these back to the States? Well, we did. So we actually dove into that pond and uh, now we're, we're in the process of constructing those. The main launch will be in a couple of weeks. Uh, and we, uh, they were, they're being made right here in our facility. So in Tennessee, you asked for it, we did it. All right, now onto these things. These things were the devil. Uh, the, I understand why cobblers are not taking these things in anymore. You probably saw when I was sanding that thing, all the residue of rubber that was just melting off and it, it, a lot of it got sucked down to the machine. I thought about pulling it out and creating this big old rubber ball. You can actually see how much of it comes off just by sanding. So if you actually look at it um, when we're, we're spinning this thing around, you can see it's not the cleanest around the edge, but you know what? Anybody who's got these pair of shoes will tell you as soon as you wear them, outside they get dirty so i'm not too worried about it it was pretty clean it's just some little specks of rubber that are melted on there i could pull them off but it'll take me a while they weren't the funnest things to do but what i'm excited about is i can actually wear them in winter without my toes getting all blue so we've lined them in, in cheap wool we actually had to cut it down a little bit it was a little too thick and it was shrinking the size of the shoe so for me to fit my clot hoppers in there i had to take that wool down a little bit but i've slipped them on they're comfortable I'm happy, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, y'all have a good one.